Welcome to Budget Beauty, where I help you look flawless for less. Welcome back and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen and this is Budget Beauty. We do everything beauty on a budget and that includes an annual eyeshadow palette declutter. <laughs> And it was very much needed. I have over 300 eyeshadow palettes and we are decluttering a lot of them, well over a hundred. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on. I upload lots and lots of new videos every single week. I already have a home for all of these eyeshadow palettes, so please don't ask me in the comments to send you the palettes because they're already spoken for. I will, of course, down in the description box, link my favorite beauty subscriptions, all of the makeup that I'm wearing in today's video, if you would like to recreate this look, discounts to my favorite indie brands, and come follow me on TikTok for a little bit more beauty on a budget. So let's do a massive, massive cutthroat eyeshadow palette declutter. Let's start the declutter off with Unearthly Cosmetics. Spoiler alert, I am not decluttering any of my Unearthly palettes. It is my favorite brand, but I thought that I would show you everything that I have in my collection. So first is the All I Ever Wanted palette. This is one of their All Shimmer, All Special Shades palettes. I love this palette. I'm not into All Shimmer palettes, except for these few from Unearthly. They're absolutely stunning. This is the Dead of Night palette. I love how deep, dark, and grungy this is. You can create some just absolutely beautiful looks with this. Unearthly's formula, as you know, is my all-time favorite. The Haunting, Hauntingly Glamorous palette. I really like this palette. Sometimes I struggle with inspiration for looks, but every look I've ever created with this, I've really loved. The Not Normal palette. Love this palette as well. It's very grungy, and this is a palette that inspires me. Every time I look at it, I just love how fun and grungy it is. Strawberry Milkshake. This is such a fun palette. Just a really fun, unique color story. The shimmers in this palette are absolutely stunning. Sleepover. This is another just really interesting color story. I love that it's berry toned with a twist. There's some deep dark shades in here. And again, the shimmers, absolutely gorgeous. The Weirdos palette, this was limited edition last, last Halloween and I really like this palette as well. Again, the color story of this is very unique and very, very different, but it is really easy to create just really pretty unique look. Vitality palette, I don't think this one's available anymore. This is their spin on a rainbow palette and it is a rainbow palette with a twist. Leather and Lace, this is Unearthly's neutral palette. Again, I always say with neutrals, I love neutrals. I just like them with a twist, something that's unique and different, different formulas in the shimmers, and this one definitely has that. Smells like Holiday Spirit. This came out last holiday season, and I really like this palette. I didn't buy it right away, and now that I have it in my collection, I'm really glad that I do because it's just a fun spin on a holiday palette. This is the All I Ever Wanted Volume 2. So there's two volumes in their all special shade shimmer palettes. This one equally as beautiful as the first. Resurgence is Heather Austin here on YouTube's palette that she created with Unearthly this year, and I love this palette. I think it's so pretty. Heather did such a good job. It is such a unique color story, but everything about it is a 10 out of a 10. Now, Unforeseen is another special shade palette. She did a special with these because they had flaws, so I bought them. I don't know where the flaws are because it's beautiful, and like I said, if I reach for an all special shade palette, it's always Unearthly. This is the In the Dark palette. Love this palette. I have created some of my all-time favorite looks with this one. Fall Magic. Now, she did redo Fall Magic this year. This palette, this particular one is no longer available. I do not own the revamped one because I really, truly love this one. This is the Bunnies palette. This came out for Easter. This is probably my least favorite palette only because it's just a pastel color story. Although beautiful, it's just not one that I get as excited about, but I am still happy to have it in my collection. The Grind palette. This one didn't get the hype it deserves. It's actually a really pretty nine pan palette. Super affordable, really gorgeous orange shades. If you love orange, this is definitely a great palette. This was my top palette of the year last year. This is the Lore palette. 
it's gorgeous. This green shimmer in the middle is everything. Absolutely everything. I love this color story. It's so different and unique. The Poison Apple Palette. I also really like this one. These color stories just bring something different to the table, but I'm inspired by them, which is exactly what I look for in my eyeshadow palette. Witching Hour. This was a Halloween release, I believe last year, maybe even the year before. It's Halloween in a palette. Absolute Halloween in a palette. Very frolic. This one was redone, and this is the redone edition. I'm not sure that this one is still available. It's a little bit of a more neutral palette with some grunge. Devour came out this year for Halloween. This was their Halloween release. Love this palette. Absolutely love this palette. I did rank all of the palettes that I tried in 2023. That video is live. I will link it down below for you if you want to see where some of these newer palettes fall. This one, one of my faves. Get Groovy. This was in her large summer mystery box. It's her spin on a rainbow palette. Although there's not a red, I mean, this is close to a red. This is still a quintessential rainbow palette, and this one is stunning. Now, Complex, this is another special shade palette. This is one of the ones that she released saying that there were flaws. Again, absolutely beautiful. I have tried all the shimmers. I don't see any flaws and I love this little five, six pan palette. Surrender. This one came out for Valentine's Day this year. And again, this is more of a neutral palette, but I do like the pop of red in there. And then this kind of sunflower yellow is really pretty. Don't be jelly. This was a revamp. It used to be an all special shade palette and then they redid it into this color story. And this palette is absolute perfection. Truly, truly love this palette. This is a new one to the Unearthly line, Sorceress Smoke. Ooh, she is gorgeous. She is neutral with a twist. Like I said, that is my preferred neutral palette. I have created also some of my favorite looks from this one. Spaced Out, this was the small summer mystery box this year. Also really pretty, more along the lines of pastels, but there's some deep dark shades like the blue and the brown that really just elevate this palette. Chilling, this was part of her Halloween mystery box last year and this palette is so pretty these little four pan palettes i love them i wish unearthly would even do more four pans and they're all kind of more monochromatic so that's chilling and then this one is thirst so this is the red leaning palette with that pop of orange and then i love this one creepy crawly this is the orange one this chartreuse shade right here absolute perfection. Next up are my Blend Bunny palettes, another indie brand that I truly love. This is the All Done Up palette, and this again is their spin on a neutral palette. The shimmers are so beautiful in this that it really, really makes this palette unique. Primal palette, I don't think this one's available anymore, but I love this palette. It is so pretty, and I actually like that there's a white and a black because it does kind of help make the looks a little deeper or lighter. And again, this is a pretty typical rainbow palette. Surge, this palette is so much fun. I love the neon row. The neon row is everything and the shimmers are really beautiful. I do like that there is kind of rainbow-esque but also some grunge. The Dollhouse palette, this is their lighter, again a little bit more on the neutral side palette. I really like the depth in the mattes. Blend Bunny's mattes are really, really nice and this palette actually gives you two full rows of shimmers. My all-time favorite mattes palette. This one has had a lot of love. I love pairing this with my unearthly all I ever wanted palettes. Again, the mattes from Blend Bunny, in my opinion, are the best mattes you can get. Blend Bunny Forget Me Not Eye and Face palette. So this came out this year, and the premise behind this is to use this both on your eyes and as a face palette. So you should be able to use this for setting powder, bronzer, contour, highlight. This palette, it's okay. It's okay. I had a hard time finding shades that match my skin tone, so I really ended up having to use this solely for eyes, and then of course the shimmers I could use for highlight, but because of that, I don't honestly see myself reaching for this. As much as I love Blend Bunny, I don't see myself reaching for this, so I am actually going to declutter this palette. I'm a little sad about it, but I'm gonna go ahead and send this off to a new home. The Blend Bunny Lure, this palette came out this year. This palette is everything. I love it. The shimmers in this palette, some of my all-time faves. And lastly, we have Sugar and Grunge. This palette, I love this. This was Halloween release for Blend Bunny. It's got some sweet, it's got some grunge, and again, the shimmers in this are beautiful. This kind of deep shimmer right here is so stunning. Then moving into my Adept Cosmetics palettes, I am not going to be 
decluttering any of these either. This palette is my favorite. This is my all-time favorite Adept palette in the world. The mattes are beautiful. The shimmers, the shimmers in this palette are something I've never seen before. We have La Cienga. This is Adept's version of a neutral palette. I like this palette. It came in an Adept mystery box. I probably wouldn't have purchased this palette with my own money, but that I, since I have it in my collection and I've used it a few times, I do actually really like it because again, the shimmers give a twist on a neutral palette. Minka, I actually got Minka this year and this palette I hemmed and hawed about. I didn't purchase it. It ended up being on a really good sale, so I grabbed it. It's mainly a shimmer palette. There's only two mattes, which are these two right here, but those mattes are so beautiful and pair so nicely with the shimmers. This is the Plain Jane Remastered and I also picked up this palette this year on a really good sale. This one is a full shimmer palette. So again, I don't reach for these as often, but I really do love that this one has a little bit more neutral shimmers. Ninhydrin, this is also one of my other favorite palettes from Adept. You do have a couple of mattes, these two kind of neutral mattes, but then you add the pop of color and a little oomph with those shimmers, and this palette really creates some really beautiful looks. This is the original Plain Jane. So this is the Plain Jane before they remastered it. And I do like this one as well. I'm actually glad that I have both because they both contain very different shimmers. And this one is also a all shimmer palette. Munette New, love this one as well. This one actually gives you quite a few more mattes. Adept does a lot of shimmers and this one actually gives you several mattes and the mattes are really, really nice. And this one's a little bit more on the neutral side. My Heather Austin palette, love this palette. But Heather has just really unique color stories that just pair so beautifully together. The palette to me is super inspiring. And lastly for Adept, I have Codan, and this palette is really pretty too. This one's kind of fun because your two mattes are these really unique colors, and then your your shimmers are kind of neutral, but it, I'm telling you it works. It makes some fun looks. I only have two palettes from Lethal Cosmetics. I'll be keeping them both. The first one is Teresa is Lethal. These are both in collaboration with Teresa is Dead here on YouTube. Really, really love both of these palettes. This was the first one, Teresa is Dead. This one I've really created some fun looks with, and I do like both of these palettes, so I'll be keeping both. Next up are my Odin's Eye palette, another indie brand I love. This is the Christmas Eve palette from last year. They did bring this back for a short time this year. I'm pretty sure it sold out again. This palette is absolute perfection. And then this was the Merry Christmas palette, also released for holiday last year. Love this palette. I actually think this is the palette I'm going to wear to my Christmas party this year. And then these are their holiday palettes for this year. First is the Hey Reindeer. When I did my video, I have a full video on most of these palettes. I said I almost didn't buy this one and I ended up buying it and loving it. I like it way better than the other palette, which is actually this one right here. This is their other holiday palette this year. This is the Snow Dream. And this is the one I originally was going to buy thinking I would love it. And I definitely like the Hey Reindeer more. If you want a full review, definitely check out my video. This is the Hella palette. This was in collaboration with Angelica Nequist here on YouTube. Love this palette. It is so beautiful. It is so grungy. It is green grunge. Soul Main 2. This palette took the internet by storm. It is beautiful. The shimmers are beautiful and the color story super fun. I really love this sunflower yellow shade. It's one of those really, really nice quality mattes. And then I have the Giant Wolves palette. This came out last year in collaboration with Annette's Makeup Corner. Love this palette. Love the vibes. And then the Hummingbird palette from the Fancy Face here on YouTube. This was her collaboration palette that came out last year as well. I only picked up these two and I love them both. And then I have the Verdandi, Verdandi palette. This is okay. I just have a hard time creating a look with this palette. So unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and declutter. Moving on to Beauty Bay palettes. First up is the Wilderness palette. This took the internet by storm when it was released. It is a really beautiful palette. Then we have Beauty Bay New Mood. And this palette is pretty, but I have so many palettes with a similar color story and some formulas and other palettes that I like better. And like I said, this is a cutthroat declutter. We're really getting rid of things. So I'm actually going to go ahead and declutter the Beauty Bay New Mood. And then I have Dark Fantasy 
and I really like this palette. These colors are ones that I typically gravitate towards. I love blues, purples, again, neutrals with a twist, so I'm definitely hanging on to this one. And then lastly, I have Age of Opulence. I hate this packaging. I think it's horrible. However, I think the color story is beautiful. Again, it's the purples, it's the teals, it's, it's everything I reach for. Now moving over to Nomad Cosmetics, another one of my favorite indie brands. This is the Gold Town USA palette. I love this palette. She's neutral. She's neutral, but the shimmers, they just make up for the neutral and just really add some spice. Speaking of neutral, this is Nomad's newest release, this little six pan neutral palette called Nomad Air. This palette is meant for travel. Now for neutrals, I'm not going to reach for this. I'm going to reach for that Ghost Town USA say palette over this one. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter. This was their Valentine's Day release, the Love and Death palette. This palette is so much fun. I will say I prefer the death side. It's just a little bit more my vibe with the cool tones. And this side is pretty, but a lot of the shades look pretty similar. But I do love this palette and I definitely want to keep it. The Royal Europe palette, in my opinion, is the best palette Nomad Cosmetics has ever released. This is their palette with multi-chromes. There's five of them and their multi-chrome formula is exquisite. And we have Fetz de Provence, Fetz de Provence. This is a little bit more of a pastel palette, but they gave us some depth, which I very much appreciate in a more light toned palette. And again, the formula in this one is really nice. Nomad American Parks, I've had this palette forever. I love this palette. I love the greens, the browns, the yellows. It's just such a fun color story. Whistler Snow Lodge, if you love blues, this is the palette for you. These shades are so awesome. I love the greens, the blues. This palette is one of my favorites. And I have Iceland Fire and Ice. This one also has some really fun shades. Very unique. Unique formulas, unique shades to my collection. Fall palette from last year, Hudson Valley. Now, I love this palette for the mattes. I, the shimmers are a bit disappointing. It's just these three in the middle. I just wish they would have given us a few more shimmers, but the mattes are really beautiful, and it is the perfect fall palette. And lastly from Nomad is Haunted Europe. This was their Halloween release last year, and I do really, really like this palette. I think it's very beautiful. I love the gold shimmer, this gold shimmer right here. Just everything about this palette is, is haunted. It's perfect for the the fall. Moving into Glam Light, and I have a lot of Glam Light palettes. We are going to be decluttering some of them. First up is the Michaela palette. This is the Pot 2. I did not pick up the Pot 1. I don't know why. It didn't really speak to me, but I do like this story this palette. I do feel like some of the greens are kind of redundant. It's just such a large palette. It definitely could have been scaled back, but the formula is really nice. And the Scooby-Doo Part 2, I love the packaging of this, and I actually really like this palette. It's large and in charge, but it has such a good variety of shades, and all of the mattes and shimmers perform really nicely. We have Strawberry Shortcake. I love this palette. I have used this palette so many times. I really love it. I love the shimmers. I love the total strawberry feel. The Chucky palette, this was released earlier this year, and this palette I thought about decluttering. Now, I love that it's cool toned, but it is a deep, dark, dark palette. There's really not a lot of light shades in here, but I can't bring myself to declutter it because I do love the color story of it, and I love that it's cool toned. I have the Chocolate Martini palette. This was one of their neutral palettes that was released last year. I really like this palette. I like that there is these shimmers that add a little bit of a twist to a more neutral palette. And then I also picked up the Dirty Martini, of course, because it was the green palette in that release. Love, love, love this one. This shade right here, this teal shimmer is gorgeous. Next up is this palette here, the Pizza Palette. I can tell you right now, I'm gonna be decluttering this. It's just way too cumbersome to store and I never reach for it. I'm also going to declutter the cake palette. Now I kept this last year. It actually made it through my eyeshadow palette declutter last year. Since that declutter, I've used it once. And I do like this palette, but you saw that I have other palettes that look just like this, just with formulas that I prefer. And then I'm also decluttering the paint palette. I've actually never used this palette. It does come with a brush and it's just, really a neutral palette with some rainbowy colors. Definitely not one that I need to keep. And 
The packaging is so big and bulky, I, I can't. Now moving on to a Scooby-Doo. This was the first Scooby-Doo release. This one is the Rut Row Reggae palette. This is so pretty. I love this. I love the greens, the purples. It's stunning. And then we have the Creeps and Crawls. This one's a little bit deep, kind of like the Chucky palette. We've got some really deep shades, not a lot to use to lighten it up, but I really love the formula and color story. This is the Nightmare on Elm Street. This is the Freddy Krueger palette. This one is brand new to my collection. I did do a full video on this if you'd like to see a tutorial using this and the other palette. I'm 100% keeping. I love the grungy green color story. This was the other palette, the Dream master palette. This one has a little bit more of a red leaning story. I'm 100% keeping this as well because this silver, the best silver in my collection. And then lastly for Glam Light, I have the Hershey Cookies and Cream palette. When I want a cool tone palette, this is my vibe. I love this palette and the quality is so good. When I was pulling palettes, I found one more adept. This is the House of L palette. This one was inspired by Superman. Love her, she's definitely staying. Now let's move on to Huda Beauty. So first I have the Love Fest palette. This is one of our small nine pan palettes. I don't think the quality of these nine pan palettes is very good and I never ever reach for them. So I'm going to be decluttering Love Fest. I'm also going to be decluttering my Jaguar palette. I kept this in last year's declutter. I do like the color story of this, but I never reach for it. And I have other cool tone palettes I like better. So I am going to declutter. And then I kept this one last year, still haven't used it. This is the Caramel palette from her Brown series. So I'm decluttering that one as well. Now I am keeping my Rose Quartz palette. I love this palette. This one, in my opinion, is the best Huda Beauty palette. I love the formulas, the shimmers. It's such a pretty ethereal palette. And then I'm also keeping my Mercury Retrograde. It's another palette from Huda Beauty that I really like. Now I have not purchased anything from the brand this year. It's not my favorite eyeshadow formula. These two palettes are really the only two palettes that I want to have in my collection at this point from the brand. Now moving on to Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is actually a face palette. This is a highlight palette. For some reason, this was in my eyeshadow drawer. I'm going to declutter. It's definitely not the highlight palette for me. And then I have her Whimsical Nudes palette. This is her neutral palette with a twist. I have to say, I don't love a lot of the Laura Lee Los Angeles formula in a lot of the palettes. I don't know why. They're just not my favorite. And this is just a neutral palette. So I am going to declutter. And lastly from the brand is Candy Skies. This is her pastel palette. I actually really like this palette. So this one I am going to keep. Now moving to Lunar Beauty, which is Manny MUA here on YouTube's brand. This was his palette from his Christmas mystery box last year. And I actually like this palette. However, I mean, if you look at the cover and look at the palette, they don't really go together, but I do actually like this palette. I just used this the other day and created just a really beautiful look. And then I have his nude prism palette. Again, he is a little bit more neutral focused, but for me, what makes these stand out are the shimmers. The shimmers are so beautiful. He has such a beautiful shimmer formula. So I have to keep this one. And then this is the Fool Fantasy palette. This was his collaboration with Laura Lee. Now this again is a neutral palette, but we do have some purples in here. And again, the shimmers, the shimmers in this palette is what's making me have to keep it in my collection. And then this was his newest release and his final release for this year. This is the Siren Sunset. This palette I love. He tried his hand at multi-chromes and they're really, really good. So definitely keeping. Now moving into BH. Now I love BH Cosmetics. I'm so sad that they are gone and they're now owned by Makeup Revolution. And because you can't buy any of these palettes anymore, and honestly, I don't reach for a lot of them, sadly, I'm going to be decluttering a big portion of my BH collection, starting with the Let That S Go palette. I do think this is really pretty. However, I have this color story over and over again and in brands that I just like a little bit better. And then I have all of their Burstone series that they released last year. I'm going to be decluttering most of them, starting with the Sapphire palette. I do think this is pretty, and I will tell you the BH formula, the old BH, before they were bought by Makeup Revolution is fantastic. I just honestly don't reach for these. I'm also going to declutter the Emerald palette, which was their green palette. This one is really, really beautiful. And like I said, the formula is really good. I'm also going to declutter Peridot, which is another one of their green leaning birthstone palettes. Also decluttering Diamond. I never reach for this one. I do think it's really pretty. I just, I have a 
hard time coming up with a good look with this color story. And I'm also going to declutter the turquoise palette. Also, by the way, all of these palettes have a pressed glitter and their pressed glitter formula is not bad. I just don't love pressed glitters. And this is another palette I just have a hard time creating a good look with because it doesn't have a deep matte. And then there's the citrine palette, which is actually my birthstone. I'm going to keep this one. This is my favorite one out of all of the birthstone palettes. I just love a good mustard yellow. Now I have a couple more from their Say It collection, which is some some profanity on the palette. There is the Do Not Disturb. I love this color story. This one's my favorite from the Say It collection, so I'm keeping. And then I also have this guy right here. And again, I do like this one because it's a little bit more of those deep, dark shades. Next up are their Travel Series, starting with Smitten in Switzerland. Now, I kept this palette last year. I used to love, love, love this palette. And I created a look with this recently, and I wasn't that excited about it. I didn't just like my look, but it didn't excite me. So I am going to go ahead and declutter Smitten in Switzerland. I'm also going to declutter Puerto Rico because this palette is very neutral. I've only used this palette once and I did like the look that I created, but I'm never gonna reach for this palette. Passion in Paris, I love this one. This one I'm for sure keeping. In my opinion, this is one of the best palettes, if not the best palette for the travel series that BH put out. And then I have a couple of their brunch releases starting with Avocado Toast. I really like this palette. This palette makes the most beautiful, beautiful look. So she is staying. And then I also have the Blueberry Muffin palette, which I love. I love this one as well. This one gives me the Paris vibes, but a little bit lighter and again, a really good formula. And then I have a couple of these. I don't know what collection this was, but this is their Absinthe palette, which is basically just a monochromatic green palette. Now the formula of this is really nice but I don't need another monochromatic green palette, so I'm going to declutter. And then I have the Venom palette, which is kind of just a cool toned palette. And this one has, you know, the grays, the purples. Again, just colors I have time and time again, so I'm going to declutter. And then there's their Sweet Shop collection. I can't bring myself to get rid of any of these. And in fact, I wish I would have bought all of them, but I only have three and I love them all. These are monochromatic palettes as well. And the formula of this, the best even better than Passion in Paris. So I have Cotton Candy. I have Bubble Gum, which is their blue palette. I love this for a monochromatic blue look. And then of course, I love the Pistachio palette, which is their green palette, also absolutely beautiful. And lastly for BH, this was their holiday release a couple of years ago. This is the Lit List. This palette, I love her. I love, love, love it. It does have one pressed glitter, but I use this palette almost every single holiday season, and the formula is really good. Now let's move on to Melody. Cosmetics. So this is their Alec Trip palette. This I actually got in a Melt Mystery box. I love this palette. Now we know that Melt is hit and miss and this palette is the really good Melt. So I am definitely keeping. I'm also going to keep my Amore Posa palette that I got on a really good deal. I like this palette. I reach for this one a lot. And again, this is the good Melt formula. I also have the Bad Side Zodiac palettes. These also came in a mystery box. I never pay full price for Melt. I always get it on sale or in a mystery box. And I like both of these palettes. This is the air palette, so I'm keeping that one. Then I also have the fire palette, which is a little bit more of their neutral palette. I prefer this one over that BH neutral palette, so I'm going to keep. And then I also have the Gemini 2, and honestly, Honestly, I don't love this palette. It is so dark and deep. There is nothing to lighten up the look. I have a really hard time with this and I feel like I have to bring in another palette and I just, I don't love it. I don't love it so honestly, we're gonna declutter. I only have two palettes from Tarte. I have the Sweet Cravings Little Nine Pan Palette, and I like this palette. I really like this palette. I've taken this traveling a couple times, so I am going to keep it. Then I also have the Tarte Man Eater Palette that was released last year. I did not buy the one that was released this year. I'm really glad I didn't because I heard it's similar to this one. I like this palette as well. I took this to Hawaii last year, used it every day for a week. Really good quality. I have a couple random palettes that I'm 100% keeping. First is the Basic Witch from Bella Butte Bar. This one came on my trip to Hawaii. The formula of this is so good. I can't wait to add more Bella Butte Bar to my collection. 
I was blown away with how good this is. And then I also have this little guy from Sugar Drizzle. This is the MILF palette or the Man I Love Frogs. And this is an all special shades palette and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm 100% keeping. I have three palettes from Shroud Cosmetics. First is Moonfall. Love her. I got her this year. I love this palette so much. And then I have both the collabs with Batty Bean here on YouTube. I have her first Hollow Bean one. Love. I guess her first was It's Freaking Bats, then Hollow Bean. Regardless, I love them. It's Freaking Bats, one of my favorite palettes. Then moving on to Sydney Grace. This is the Quintessence palette, and this was in collaboration with Temptalia, and this was actually released a couple of years ago. It was one of the first palettes I ever bought from Sydney Grace. I like all of these palettes. I have all three of them, and I plan on keeping them all. So first is Quintessence, then Radiant Reflection, which is a little bit more of a jewel tone palette. And then on the horizon, all of these palettes, really nice formula, and I love using these. I also have the Enduring Love palette, and I like this neutral palette. First of all, it's cool tone, and we've got a twist. This blue shimmer, beautiful. The shimmers in this are really nice. I mean, the mattes are really nice as well. I do find myself reaching for this palette a lot. And then I have the Tiny Marvels from Mel Thompson, who unfortunately passed away, and I really like this palette. I just used this the other day, and the formula is really nice and it's just a palette that I don't see myself parting with. So let's move over to Natasha Denona. I have a lot and I know this is going to be surprising but I'm going to be decluttering a lot. So first is the little mini three pan retro. I actually like this one. I do like the color story of this. It's not just a plain neutral palette and these little three pans are great for travel. And then I have the little three pan Biba. I am however going to declutter this one. This one's a little bit more neutral and I just don't see myself using it as much as the retro. Now her mini, mini, mini palettes that come out pretty regularly. These ones are a decent price point. This is the Triochrome. Love her. 100% keeping. And then I have the mini nude. I'm also going to declutter this one. I, I'm not going to reach for this. I created one look with this. Didn't love it. I'm going to pass it on. Although one of my shimmers is broke and I keep pressing it into place, I really love this palette. I love the green. This is the mini Metropolis. I do not own the large Metropolis, so I'm 100% keeping the mini. And then the mini bronze palette, this is one I am going to keep. Out of all the neutral mini palettes I have, this is the one I prefer to use. And then her five pan palette. So these are a little bit larger. This is the Fez palette. This came in a subscription box. The brown shade came broken, but I love this palette. I love popping that blue on my lower or lash line, so I'm keeping this one. And then I have the Ayana palette, and this is a little bit more cool tone neutral with this really pretty shimmer. This one has a vibe to it, so I'm keeping as well. The Jubilee palette, this also came in an Ipsy. I've created a couple looks with this that I liked, but I haven't reached for it at all this year, so I'm going to declutter. I also have the Cupid palette. Again, just not a color story that inspires me or that I want to reach for, so I'm decluttering. And then I have the Five Pan Alloy palette. This one I like for a little bit more warmer, cool tone neutral, so I am going to keep this one as well. And then moving into her midi palettes. These are her, her little bit more expensive ones. I don't own any of her really expensive ones, but this is the Love palette. I kept this through the declutter last year, haven't used it since haven't used it at all, don't reach for it, so honestly, it needs to be decluttered. Then I have the My Dream palette. I really like this palette. This is one that I really like. I think the formula is the really good Natasha Denona, so she is staying. And then I have the I Need a Nude palette, and I like this palette. I know she's neutral, but I actually reach for this one a lot, so I'm definitely keeping. And lastly, my favorite Natasha Denona palette ever is the Yucca palette. This one is so grungy and beautiful and so different for Natasha Denona, but different in a really good way. Let's move into ColourPop, and I have a lot of ColourPop. I have not purchased anything but one palette this year. ColourPop's just kind of fallen off the radar with me. I am going to also be pretty cutthroat with my ColourPop palettes because I don't reach for them that often. So I'm going to start with the Malibu Barbie palette. Now, I like this palette. I've created several looks for the, with this palette, but I haven't used it at all this year. Not one. So with that said, I'm going to declutter. I also bought the Powerpuff palette last year. Never used it. Finally got around to using it this year. I liked my look. My issue with this palette is there's no depth. There's no deep matte, and I like having a deep matte. I've used it once. Once is enough. I'm going to declutter. I'm also going to declutter all of my little four pan palettes. This is a Scorpio palette. I kept this one because I'm a Scorpio. 
haven't used it since last declutter. So that one definitely is going. And then I have the Sorbet Quad. I never reach for this one. It's just not a color story that I'm inspired by. Little Waffle Cone Quad. Kept this in the declutter last year thinking I would use it because I did like the color story. Have not used it at all. And then lastly, an Emerald Away. I do like the greens. You guys know I like the greens. Again, I kept this last year. Haven't used it, so passing it along. My ColourPop Clay It Cool. I actually really like this palette. I've used this palette several times, but when I was getting it ready for this declutter, this is just a color story I have over and over again. And honestly, there's other palettes that I prefer more, so I am actually going to declutter Clay It Cool. The little nine pan palette of Orchid You Not. I really do like this palette. For a monochromatic purple palette, when I think of those types of looks, this is the one I wanna use, so this palette is staying. I'm also keeping Blowing Smoke, which is the monochromatic kind of cool toned grungy blacks. I love this for a smoky eye, so keeping. I also have Going Coconuts, which is another one of their plastic nine pan palettes. This one's a little bit more neutral. I like this palette, but I don't reach for it. I don't reach for it and we're being cutthroat, so decluttering. My Of Quartz palette, I love this. This cool tone palette, I really like. This one I use a lot, a lot more than the that's are the Going Coconuts, so I'm going to keep. And then I'm also keeping That's Taupe. This is honestly one of my favorite little palettes from ColourPop. I have the Sprinkle A Little Magic. Now, honestly, I almost decluttered this one, but, 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 I looked at it and I thought, no, I'm inspired by this. This palette inspires me, so I am actually going to keep it for another year. I have all of the Hocus Pocus palettes, starting with the Witching Hour. This one is my least favorite palette that they did with the Hocus Pocus collab. And because I have the Witching Hour from Unearthly, that similar color story but better formula, I am going to declutter. Here's the first Hocus Pocus collab, Gather Round Sisters. This one I actually like. This one's my favorite of all the Hocus Pocus palettes, so I'm keeping. And then lastly is the Hocus Pocus 2, and I I also really like this color story. So I'm going to keep both of those Hocus Pocus palettes. Good as Gold is a palette that's old to ColourPop, but I actually just bought it this year. I really like this palette a lot. Now I have another kind of gold palette that I'm going to declutter. I'll show you that next because I actually like this one a little bit more. And that's my California Love palette. I used to love this palette. I've used this several times, but I really actually like Good as gold a little bit better, so I am going to declutter. This is the one and only ColourPop palette I purchased this year, and this is in collaboration with Haunted Mansion, and this is the Welcome Foolish Mortals, and I love this palette. I'm happy I purchased this. This is the one and only palette, and it was a good decision. I love how cool toned it is, and the formula is really nice. This is another old palette that I really like. This is the Misunderstood, the Disney Villains palette. Every time I use this palette, I love my look. I love my look, so I'm actually gonna keep this one. I have the Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer. This palette actually just came back again this year for a short time, and I do like this palette, but honestly, it's not my favorite Christmas color story. I prefer the BH one, the Get Lit palette, so as sad as I am about this, I am going to go ahead and declutter. Also, sadly, a little bit, I'm gonna declutter Lush Life. I do like this palette. I just haven't used it at all this last year. I used it quite a bit when it first came out. I think the formula is the really good color pop formula, but I have these colors and I don't reach for this one, so I'm going to declutter. For a site, which is the collaboration with Raw Beauty Christie, I don't really w w watch her, but I like this palette a lot. I love that it's jewel toned and that there's light mid tone and deep mattes. And this is the really good formula, so I'm actually gonna keep this one. Two of the Star Wars palettes, starting with the Mandalorian, and this is their more cool toned palette. You see how many cool toned palettes I have. And over this one in the Haunted Mansion, I like Haunted Mansion better, so I'm actually going to declutter this one. And I'm also going to declutter this one as well. I never reach for this one. Although I think the color story is pretty, I honestly never reach for it. I'm also going to declutter Plush Like Me. I tried this palette out again this year after not not using it for almost a full year. I don't love it. I don't love the color story. I don't love the formula, so I am going to declutter Plush Like Me. This may come as a bit of a surprise, but I'm gonna declutter Nightmare Before Christmas as well. Again, I like it. I think the color story is unique, but I never reach for it. Never reach for it. Not my favorite movie in the whole world, so it doesn't have any nostalgia for me, so I'm gonna pass this one along. And lastly, for ColourPop, I have the Troublemaker palette. I really like this palette. It's cool tone, and I love that there's cool toned mauves. It makes it very unique 
unique to my collection. Really good formula, so I'm keeping. I have two palettes from Give Me Glow. First up is the Juicy Olive palette. I really like this one. For a monochromatic green palette, I like this one, so I'm going to keep. I'm also going to keep my Give Me Glow Cosmetics Nightlife palette. I actually really love this color story. It's so pretty and so unique, and these two shimmers are absolutely stunning. I have three ABH palettes, starting with my Norvina palette. I have used the heck out of this palette, and I'm honestly kind of over it. I don't think the quality is that fantastic. It's a color story I have time and time again, so I'm going to declutter. And then I have the ABH Primrose palette. I actually just got this palette this year, and for a neutral palette, I really like this one, and I love the inclusion of the two blushes. You can also use them as eyeshadows, but I actually like the quality and color story of this one, so I am going to keep. And then I'm also going to keep the Fall Romance, which also recently came out from ABH. I got this in a trend mood box and I like this palette a lot. Now moving on to my Too Faced palettes. First up is Let's Play. This is just a little eight pan palette. I have to say I do like the tin packaging. And this color story actually is pretty and the formula is really good. I just don't reach for it, so I am going to declutter. I'm also going to declutter Christmas Coffee. Now, I kept this palette last year during my declutter. Haven't used it since. Just a very neutral palette with a pop of green. Actually, really similar to this one, Major Love. Same. Neutral palette with a pop of green. So I'm actually going to declutter. I have the Italian Spritz palette. I actually just got this one this year. This is a really good quality. I really like this palette. You can see it's well loved. I've reached for it a lot. So I'm going to keep this one. And I'm also going to keep Cosmic Crush. I like this palette. Really this shimmer right here is what saves this palette for me. It's a very neutral palette, but with that shimmer and this shimmer right here, it makes the most beautiful look. I have Too Faced Sweet Peach. I am going to declutter. I prefer the Italian Spritz palette over the Sweet Peach, so I never reach for this one. And then I used to love this palette, the Cinnamon Swirl, but again, I haven't used it since my declutter last year, so I'm going to declutter this one as well. Moving on to Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the Armed and Dangerous palette in collaboration with Morphe. Don't use this palette. Don't really think the formula is that great, so decluttering. So have the Strawberry Feels palette. This is my favorite palette from Jaclyn. Now, I don't think the shimmers are anything special, but I love every time, I, I love my look every time I use this palette, and I do like these berry tones, so I'm keeping. I also have the Jaclyn Hill Divine Neutrals for neutral palette. I think this one is really, really nice, and again, I really like the looks I create, so I'm going to keep that one as well. I have the Jaclyn Cosmetics Dear Mom, in collaboration with her mom, Robin. I don't reach for this palette. I don't think it's that great, to be honest, so I'm going to declutter. I decluttered my volume two last year, and I'm going to go ahead and declutter volume one this year. Again, I never reach for this. I have a couple of kind of one-off palettes. This is the Flower Punk from Kaleidos. I'm keeping, I love this palette. I also have Poison Ivy with Milan Row in Doodles by the Bunny. This is a really good quality palette, so I'm keeping. Also from Notoriously More, but I have a couple. I have Gold Dust Woman. I just got this palette this year. Ooh, if you want a good quality gold palette, highly recommend. And also from Notoriously More, but I have Rusted Essence, and I really love this palette. I love this color story. Lois Cosmetics Meet Me in the Underworld. This is the only palette I have from the brand. It is so good. I heard that their other palette they released isn't as good, but this one is really, really good. So I am keeping. And from Pink Crush Cosmetics, the only palette I have from them is Metamorphosis, and I love this color story. It is beautiful. The quality is really good. I need to be purchasing more from this brand. Also from the indie brand Mermaid Tales, this came in my Ice Cream Beauty subscription box. This is such a fun palette. I love the color story of this. It's just so unique and different, and the quality is really nice, so I'm going to keep. Next up from Ace Beauté, I have the Envy palette. I love I love this palette. I love this color story. Definitely keeping. I also have the Aura palette from Ace Beauté. Also love that this is purple with some grungy tones. And my all-time favorite palette from Ace Beauté is Tropical Vibe. So of course I'm keeping this one as well. Now I have two palettes from Ofra. I'm going to declutter both. I don't like either of them. I don't really like Ofra's quality of their shadow. First up is the Symphony palette. And then I have the collaboration palette with Leora. I don't think she's on YouTube anymore, but again, I don't really care for the quality. 
so I'm going to declutter bowl. Next up, let's go Juvia's Place. So this is the Bronzed Rustic Palette. I'm going to declutter this one. I don't think there's enough depth in this palette to create a really cohesive eye look. It's just honestly not my favorite from Juvia's Place. I also have the little four pan of the Rebel Grays. I like this palette. There's deep mattes, light mattes. The shimmers are really pretty. Although I will say that the shimmers, they're pretty similar on the eyes. That's my big beef with this palette. I think I'm going to keep it for one more year and we'll see how often I use it. I have the Festival, Festival by Juvia's Place, which is a little bit more colorful palette. I never reach for this one, so I'm going to declutter. I have the chocolate. I like this little neutral palette a lot. If I want kind of a chocolate brown look, I instantly want to reach for this one. And speaking of browns, this is the Coffee Shop palette. And honestly, I thought I was gonna like this a lot more than I do. I don't think the quality of this palette is very good. I felt like they kind of blended away to nothing. So out of neutrals, I'm gonna keep the little chocolates and declutter the Coffee Shop. I really like this little palette to the Nubian Royal. I just like this purple color story. It's kind of monochromatic, but it's kind of not. It does have a little bit of a twist and the shimmers are really pretty. And I'm also going to keep my little Fula palette. I just really like this little palette. Again, a unique color story, really good quality. And then I have the Nubian 2. I am going to also declutter. I found one more Laura Lee, the Nudie Patootie number two. Again, not my favorite formula. I'm going to throw this one in the declutter as well. Now let's move into Rasha B Cosmetics, which is a brand I discovered this year in subscription boxes. And I love this brand so much. First is the Little Peridot palette, which is kind of a monochromatic green palette. Her formula of mattes and shimmers is exceptional. I'm 100% keeping this one. And then I have the Candy palette. This came out for Halloween this year. I think the color story of this is really pretty and unique. And I did create some really nice looks with this, but I have these colors. So I think I'm going to declutter. I'm also going to declutter the Little Nile palette. Now I will say that I think this color story is beautiful. My issue with this is just the range of depth in the mattes. I always have to bring in another palette. So I think I'm going to pass this one along. I'm also going to cut clutter beach please. And I want to point out that none of the formulas are bad. They're really, really exceptionally good. It's just, I need to be cutthroat in this declutter. I have way, way, way too many palettes. And this is kind of along the lines of a rainbow palette. Reminds me of one I have from Blend Bunny. So I'm going to pass this one along. And really other people in my life can experience how good Rasha B is. <laughs> I'm also going to pass along Bonfire, which was one of their palettes that came out for the fall time. Really pretty. As you can see really pretty color story just don't need another fall palette and I'm also going to declutter gold digger this one is a little bit more on the neutral side I have a few of the beautifuls these are their multi-chrome palettes so all of the shades in these palettes are single multi-chromes and you guys know I already said I don't reach for singles a whole lot and I reach for my unearthly way more than these these are beautiful multi-chromes but I don't ever use them and I'd rather they go to someone who will use them so I'm going to declutter and then this is is the Be Beautiful 2, which is the volume two of the multi-chromes, also decluttering. I have the Christmas Wishes palette. I'm keeping this one. This was in collaboration with just Anne on YouTube. This is a beautiful color story. And again, I'm gonna be wearing this one this holiday season. And then I'm also keeping Extraordinaries because I love this color story. Again, this was in collab with just Anne here on YouTube as well. I just really love this color story. I just found another Ace Beauté. I'm telling you, I have way too many palettes. This is the Ace Beauté falling for you palette. I like this palette a lot, but I'm going to declutter this. Again, I just have a lot of fall color stories. I have two naked palettes. That's all I have left in my collection. First is the Robin Eisenberg palette. I thought I liked this palette a lot more than I do. There is no deep mattes in this palette at all. Your deepest shades are shimmer, so I'm decluttering. And then I have Naked Honey. Now, I kept this last year. Haven't used it since. Haven't used it since, so guess what? It's going to be decluttered as well. So now I have no naked palettes. I don't love the Urban Decay Naked formula, so I'm not really mad about it. Let's do Pat McGrath next. So this is the Divine Rose Quad. I actually just got this in my Ipsy box. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I've only used it once, so I'm going to keep it and try it again. Try it again, and if I don't like it, we'll declutter it next year. I also have the Celestial Nirvana Little Five Pan Palette. This one I don't think is that great. I didn't love this palette at all, so I'm going to declutter. And then I have her Huge Mothership Palette, and I kept this last year. 
have not touched it since. I know people rave about Pat McGrath. I just don't reach for Pat McGrath. So you know what? I'm gonna declutter the mothership. So I have, hey, I have two palettes from LA Girl. Now I have to say this quality is really good for this affordable drugstore brand. I think this color story is really beautiful, but since keeping it from last year, I have not used it at all, at all. So I am going to declutter. Same goes with the main stage palette from LA Girl. I think this color story is beautiful, but again, I haven't reached for it. I also have two palettes from She Glam, which is Shein's makeup line. This was their little Scorpio palette. Quality of this is really nice. It's just a cool tone palette I have over and over again, so I am going to declutter. And then I also have the She Glam Wolf Calls. Again, a neutral palette color story I have time and time again, so I'm going to declutter this one as well. I have a couple palettes from Rude Cosmetics. This is the Spell Book. This palette is beautiful. I have used this palette so many times. So, so many times. I think the formula of this is really, really nice. I'm just, I'm ready to pass it along. So I'm going to declutter. I'm also going to declutter the little dubstep palette from Rude. Now this palette, I like the quality of it a lot, but this is more of a pressed glitter. It just doesn't have a lot of options for shimmers. So I don't reach for it. And it's kind of a monochromatic orange palette. So I have quite a few palettes from Saints Angel Sinners. It's an indie brand that I really, really like. The owner is lovely. First is the Secret Society. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love how deep and dark this is. This reminds me of a small version of the Chucky palette, but maybe even better quality. So I'm keeping. I also have the Be The Gift palette. I like this. I like the variation in the color story. Grungy and the shimmers are spectacular. The Friends Giving palette. I actually just got this palette. This is one I don't see myself reaching for that often. So I think I'm going to pass this one along. And I have your The Star Again, just not a palette I see myself reaching for, just not as much as some of the other palettes I have. So I'm going to pass this one on as well. And then I have the Fairy Light palette. And this is a little bit more neutral, but it's a neutral with a twist. These shimmers are amazing. So I am going to keep. This is the only palette I have from Cash Beauty Color Trip. And I kept this last year. I did use this palette again this year a couple of times. It does have some water activated liners, which I don't love but I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to let it go. My only palette from OPV Beauty is the Spotlight palette. I never reach for this, so I'm going to pass that on. I'm also going to declutter this little palette from Loho. This is just a monochromatic green palette. Nice quality, just don't need another monochromatic green palette. My only little palette or shadow from Danessa Myricks is this single light work shadow. It's one of those kind of chromey flakes. I never use it, so I'm going to pass it on. I'm also going to pass on this little quad from Illuminati. I have a couple palettes from Illuminati. This quad is pretty. It's all special shades though, and I just don't reach for it. And then I also have this palette from Illuminati. I don't think the quality of this is very good, and there is a pressed glitter that I will never use, so I'm going to declutter. I have two little palettes from Makeup Revolution. First is the Nudes palette decluttering. And then I have the little mini tasty avocado palette. I kept this one from last year. I do think this is pretty good quality. It's just a color story I have over and over again, very similar to my avocado toast from BH that I'm keeping. So I'm going to declutter. I have this palette from the brand Loritzi. This is the burnt palette. And this is a very, 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 very neutral palette. I'm never going to use it. I only have one palette from Wicked Widow Beauty. This is the Graveyard Smash palette and I love her. I really love her, so she is not going anywhere. This brand, I definitely want to get more of. I have the Thankful palette from the brand Color or Cholor. You guys, the look I created with this palette was so beautiful. I really liked this palette, but it's a fall palette that I have over and over again, so honestly, I'm going to have to declutter. And this little Fenty palette that I kept last year, number six, I kept it last year, haven't used it since. Haven't used it since, don't reach for it, so going to declutter. I have this palette from JCat Beauty. This is really good quality. I did a testing new makeup with this palette and the quality of it is really good. I just honestly, I don't see myself reaching for it. I haven't reached for it since the video, so I'm going to declutter. I'm also ready to declutter the Melancholia palette from Moira Beauty. I do like this palette, it's a unique color story, but I just, I don't reach for it anymore and it's been sitting in my collection. I think it just deserves a better home. And that's the same with this palette Perception from Midas Beauty. Midas Beauty is no longer in business, so I'm going to declutter this one as well. From Gourmand Girls, this is the Haunted palette. It isn't going anywhere. I freaking love this palette. Love 
love, love this palette. I have this palette, this one's from Il Maquillage. Now, I will say that the quality of this palette is really nice. The mattes and everything are beautiful. It's just a cool tone neutral palette. I'm just never gonna use it, so I'm gonna pass it on. I'm also going to pass this one on. This one's from Timu, and it is supposedly a dupe for the Natasha Denona Glam. I have the Natasha Denona Cool Tone Palette. I prefer that one, so I'm going to declutter. Now, I have a couple more from Gourmand Girls, the same brand that made Haunted that I love. This is the Secret Grove Palette. I love this color story. I hate the quality of this. It's awful. I'm sorry, but it's awful, so I'm going to declutter. And then I'm also going to declutter the Gourmand Girls and Saints Angel Sinners Together palette. It's just not a color story that excites me. I have this little four pan of multi-chrome duochromes from Delancey. These are honestly very beautiful. I just don't reach for them. And then I have the Nobla Side by Side palette. I was actually pleasantly surprised with this palette, but since I reviewed this palette, I haven't reached for it, so I'm going to declutter. And I'm also going to declutter this Trace Luce Beauty Dolce Vita palette. I was pretty disappointed with the quality. I have a couple palettes from Beauty Creations. First is this mini pro palette. It's a pink and purple color story. I have this color story, so I'm decluttering. I'm also decluttering this little five pan from Beauty Creations as well. Just a neutral color story. Palettes from the brand Amore Us, Amore US. This is the Pearl Paradise palette. I got this in a subscription box and I was excited about it. I don't like the quality, unfortunately, at all, so I'm decluttering. And I'm also decluttering this one from Moira. This is a really thick, kind of annoying packaging, and it is just a neutral, neutral palette. Not even my favorite formula. I have this tiny little guy from Essence, the Don't Worry palette. This is really good quality, but you can see it's cool toned, which I have a thousand of, so decluttering. I'm also decluttering this little nine pan palette from AOA, the Shop Miss A brand. This is like a dollar eyeshadow palette. Good quality, just neutral. From Ocalon, I have this ethereal palette. This is supposed to be a dupe of the Huda Beauty. It's not. The Huda Beauty is much better, so decluttering. So decluttering this golden clove from Rachel Couture. Ugh, the quality of this, no bueno. And also, I'm going to declutter Scandal from Lorella, just a neutral palette. I have this little four pan palette from e.l.f. I've never used this, so I'm going to declutter. Then I have the e.l.f. 10 pan palette. This is honestly good quality, but it's a neutral story. I have time and time again, so I'm also decluttering. I can't believe we're here. My final palette is this little Kaja Bento box. I'm gonna declutter this one as well. I hope you enjoyed my 2023 eyeshadow palette declutter. I am quite proud of myself. I got rid of things I didn't think that I would get rid of, and a third of my eyeshadow palette's gone. Actually makes me really happy. Sad in a way, but happy in a way. That leaves me room for palettes in the new year. If you enjoyed today's declutter, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on, and don't forget to check out the description box for my favorite beauty subscriptions. All of the makeup that I'm wearing in today's video, if you would like to recreate this look, discounts to my favorite indie brands and come follow me on TikTok for a little bit more beauty on a budget. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.